Welcome to Backstage with Jeffrey Morrissey. I'm your host, Jeffrey Morrissey. Uh, I am in the van of Mr. Raylan Baxter. Raylan, thank you so much for having us today. Welcome to the BBV, the big black van. And the big black van is very nice. You guys have taken quite some care in decorating, especially this back portion here. How long has this current setup kind of lasted? Let's see, I've owned the van for three years. Mm -hmm. Put a solid 100,000 miles on it in those three years. Wow. Uh, and this whole decoration of the back, for all of you listeners out there, uh, there's a dream catcher, a horsetail um, emulator, uh, Tibetan prayer flags, a Byzantine Empire looking uh, tapestry that my mom gave me, and then, you know, scattered hats, sunglasses, um, rave goggles, noise talking boxes, doodles from a friend, and a, uh, a, a, a rose bush hanging from the chandelier. And this has been going on one and a half years. I lived in this van in 2017 for six months really? and I took oh. out the four chairs that you're sitting on and I put mm -hmm. a mattress a queen size mattress right there it's certainly a pretty cool setup hundred thousand miles is nothing to shake a stick at that's quite a long time um, what is sort of the the worst stretch of miles that you've had in this van what is sort of the the worst story from it Ooh, any any drive from we're about to have a couple this year too but any drive mm -hmm. where where when we're opening up for a band that's in a tour bus like the revivalists mm -hmm. which we will be following them <laughs> um or grace potter or you know any uh from la you know from kansas city to denver because mm -hmm. usually there's a show in kansas city and then the next day there's a show in denver so you gotta drive overnight and we we uh if you s you'll see a, a dent on the back right side mm -hmm. outside we got involved in a eight semi truck pile up oh my god where we got shot out of the middle of it into the into the median and then eight semis piled into each other exploded flame balls shooting in the in the sky because one of them had hazardous materials in it oh, flame geez. balls shooting in the sky in the middle of winter at 8 a.m that'll wake you up totally i woke up to austin going oh god oh god oh god oh god oh god and then a boom and then we got out of it luckily yeah, seriously. Wow, that's a that's an intense way to start the day. And, and the van really looks no worse for the wear, especially considering that. Well, I'm, I'm my nickname is Mama Ray. Mama Ray. Yeah. So when we get to the venue every night, the band th they load the gear in, and I stay in here, and I fold all the blankets, and I I sweep it out every like three times a day. Um, I usually don't smoke cigarettes in here, by the way, like this. So, are you okay? Oh, totally okay. Okay. Yeah. No, not a problem at all. Um, it's, it's getting smokier and smokier in here. Smokier and smokier and colder and colder out there. So it's completely understandable why you would uh, prefer the van. Um, but this is Mama Ray, a great setup to be proud of. That's for sure. Got the uh, chance to overhear a little bit of sound check. You guys are doing an awesome cover of uh, Iron Man. Is that one that you guys like to usually pull out at sound check? Do you have songs that you? No, that's the first time we run through that song. So really? we're we're gonna learn it for. I don't know, the summer, maybe the end of this tour, because mm -hmm. I still have to figure out all those guitar lines. But uh, the band's got it. And, yeah, we do some, we're introducing Iron Man, but we do some T-Rex, we do some Neil Young, some Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. do some Jerry Rafferty. Wow. We got some covers. I was going to say, all the good stuff. That's, uh, that's definitely uh, some stuff that I would love to hear. Now, this is a conversation that I want to loop you into because it's been uh, going around my friend group recently, and I want to kind of get your input on it. We've been having a conversation about whether folks are good cops or bad cops. If you had to place yourself within that uh, realm, are you a good cop or are you a bad cop? Good cop. Good cop. Yeah, a good cop. W a bad cop with good intentions. A bad cop with good intentions. Like, I would let some drug deals go down. Mm -hmm. I would just want um, it not to injure anybody in the neighborhood. Of course. So, yeah, you could, you, could, uh, you could definitely sell a bunch of weed on my watch, but no meth. No meth. No, no, no hard drugs. Mm -hmm. So that's a bad cop with good intentions. I completely agree, and uh, I, I wish, what was I going to say, I think I'm going to adopt that myself, a bad cop with good intentions. Nice. I know that wasn't an option, but...
hey, you know what? We, we got creative with it. That's perfect. Now, moving on to Wide Awake, the, uh, the subject at hand, I was reading a quote that said that you were excited and felt like a writer when you were writing this record. So what was it about this album, the third album, that sort of made you feel that way? I would compare it to a third race of a race car driver, uh, of like a third legitimate race. So by the, the first one, you get in your getting your ch- you know you're doing the thing you're nervous you don't really know how to drive in the second race you got a little bit better car you know the engine a little bit more and by the third race um, you've had so much time to think about the first two races that the third time's the charm and I, I was able to I just had a better understanding of the guitar of my voice of r- of songwriting the craft of songwriting mm. and i had the perfect place in which to reside to write and write and write and escape and be by myself and and write songs all day long all night long mm-hmm. and that's important and was that sort of the first time for you that you'd had that uninterrupted time for it yes yeah i i, I started writing in kind of chaotic situations because of just from living situations you know I lived with a band a punk band when I first moved back to Nashville 10 years ago for six months I lived with them and they would practice in the basement and I would write in the attic and then after that I moved in with uh, some family friends and I lived in their kids toy room for two years and they had two boys and so you know just kids come home from school I'm writing I got to stop, throw them on the couch, you know, m- play with them. Mm. And and then just piecing together songs up and through my second album. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was all pieced together stuff. But this one with the third album, I had time mm-hmm. and ideas already. I didn't have to like pull out of thin air stuff. I had little voice memos on my phone that I'd collected over the pri- previous three or four years, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was important. It's like, I, I just, I had a better grip on what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Well, and it, and it shows in the record, too, and you were able to uh, work with Butch Walker, who's one of my favorite producers. I had the chance to chat with him in September, and sort of like, I can definitely see y'all working well together. So I know that things sort of came together when you both played a review, but what was it that made that partnership specifically work? Butch is a singer-songwriter. Yeah. Um, and he is an incredible musician and he's worked on so m- he's produced so many different records from Pink from Fall Out Boy to his own music um, and to my music t- and lots of pop yeah lots of pop and I wrote pop songs mm-hmm. like if you listen to the demos of the songs it's like intro verse chorus verse chorus bridge instrumental or what you know there's mm-hmm. like there's certain forms for each song and and he understood the songs immediately he played bass on the record eric slick played drums who is dr dog's drummer but oh, eric yeah. is eric is a singer songwriter aaron embry played piano and aaron embry played with elliot smith stone temple pilots ed sharp and the magnetic zeros he's a singer songwriter mm-hmm. and then so there's four singer songwriters in the band and then our our brother Nick Bockrath, who's married to a singer songwriter, and he plays guitar in Cage of the Elephant, mm. and so he understands Matt Schultz, who's the lead singer of Cage. He understands how those songs are formed, and Matt's a big inspiration for me. So it was a perfect. And Butch just Butch played bass and was there for me to lean on when I needed to lean on him, and he didn't. Which is the hardest thing to do. He played bass and stayed out of the way, as he mm. says. And I've produced a couple records for friends, and I've gotten way in the way. And I've, uh, ex- you know, ruined some songs. I look, listen back, you know. So he just, he trusted everybody, and we trusted him. The other common thread, after you mentioned all those names, um, Dr. Dog, Cage the Elephant, Butch, Butch's solo work, you, all very live-oriented musicians, too. Like, yeah. the live shows are just energy, off the charts, incredible. So... I imagine the translation of playing this album live must have been fairly seamless. It was. We we spent 10 days in Santa Monica at Butch's studio. Mm-hmm. We worked from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., five days for two weeks, uh, Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. weekends off. And 
the first day we had tracked three songs. The second day we tracked three songs. After the fifth day, we had tracked 15 songs. And then we had the next following week of five days to do overdubs. And and then it was done. Other than a couple uh, pedal steel overdubs in Nashville and the beautiful vocal performance of Lennon Stella, uh, which we did in Nashville, it, the record was done like that. Wow. There you go. And it's a great product, too. One of my favorite songs is the last song, Let It All Go, which just sort of the, the chorus of that is great. What do you think you had to let go of in order to make this the best record possible? Hmm. That's a great question. Thank you. I. Well, yeah, I mean, that song is. It's. I don't know if I let go of the proper m- amount of things to make this record, you mm-hmm. know? Because I'm a, I'm a very controlling person when it comes to uh, the un, undefined future of a song, and I sir I'm I I, I am a, a a slave to the song. The song is my master. You know what I mean? Mm. And so, and it just goes back to Butch being a veteran and knowing when something's good, and. And and really, he he allowed me to let go of my own ego and my own nitpickiness, Mm -hmm. just to being like, it's cool, dude. It's cool, man. No, this is good. Don't don't change the melody. This is good. Now let's go get some lunch. (laughs) All right, get your mind off of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, letting go. On a bigger picture, just letting go of of the the bull honky that gets in the way of us seeing the sunset and the sunrise and all the the stuff that we as humans take for granted just being alive being a human being Mm. and being able being lucky enough to go through um adversity i'm not a chihuahua tied up in tijuana you know with no freedom i'm free and that has got me very less worried than I was 10 years ago. Yeah. I mean, that's that's certainly a great way to think about it. And I mean, it must be tough to sort of keep things in perspective when you're constantly in motion like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just like I'm I have a the natural way of thought and approach to the de- to the day and to life and uh, that's been shaped by my mom and dad and my friends and whatever books I've read and movies I've loved and my own my own epitome epitomies I mean my own uh, epiphanies mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, my own epiphanies um, uh, in 35 years you know yeah and it's been nice it's uh, I bring on that ch- I accept all challenges because um, there's a way to get through everything of course of course and you just sort of mentioned your background and in researching this a little bit more I realized that you and I actually have two interesting things in common both comm majors um and also both went to jesuit schools interested to kind of hear how that sort of shaped you because i I just always found that being in that jesuit environment whether you sort of buy into it or not it has an effect on your worldview at the end of the day the jesuits well i had very little to do with the jesuit side of loyola because i went there to play lacrosse yeah whether they were a jesuit school or not i was going to go there to play lacrosse and i did have a one f- f- what was his name he taught world history and he was a very peaceful jesuit uh, brother or what are they called priest i uh, i think they can brother. be either or and you know seeing them walk around campus and as peaceful as they they look they come across mm-hmm. that had an effect on me and at Loyola, you know, the ev- it was always pushed to our faces, integrity, mm-hmm. and being the Renaissance man, having a well-rounded education, being a well-rounded human being, being a balanced individual, and having a good heart. Uh, I'm a Libra, mm-hmm. so uh, b- uh, the pursuit of balance is my bread and butter, you know, whether I want it to be or not. And so that, that, that's where I clicked with. 
Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I can completely sign on to that as well. Um, and this is something we were talking a little bit about uh, earlier, how special those three days at the end of July are for Newport folk. One of my things that I always love to ask uh, artists that have played Newport is, we're assembling this year's Newport Supergroup. Who do you have playing in that group, the, the group that they always end up debuting every year? Billy Strings. Mm -hmm. Wow. John Baptiste. He was amazing last year. Billy Strings, John Baptiste, I feel like Sharon Van Etten would be in there mm -hmm. as with the with the the dark vibes. Let's see drummers. Mackenzie, the Mid Lakes drummer. Okay. Mc Mackenzie Deasy, M Deasy. I don't know. I don't know his last name. He's an incredible drummer. All the Texas gentlemen. Yeah, they're always great. You know, and that's about all I can put together for now. I'm sure there's some other specialists, but yeah. Totally. Well, that, that would be a set that I would go see for sure. Um, and then I know that you have a lot to get to tonight. I certainly don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, so I'll end it with this. Who are you listening to right now? It's Boogie. Boogie. Okay. He's a hip-hop artist, West Coast America. He just put out a new album called Everything's for Sale. I'm always listening. Oh, dang. Today I listened to Hoist by Fish. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, let's see. My boy Bendigo Fletcher band out of louisville slash lexington kentucky folk rock band they're great just mm -hmm. getting going i've been listening to a bunch of brian adams oh that's a good <laughs> one. uh oh mac miller really yeah nice. mac miller we, we're, we're, we'll do a mac miller cover tonight oh that'll be so cool which one come uh come back to earth the first track of his last album wow and then billy Eilish. okay Shh, she's amazing and uh, let's see lennon stella mm-hmm big time she just put out her first dp and that's about it see interested in just hearing that um with mac and, and billy sort of two more poppy acts you mentioned that you were writing s uh, somewhat of more pop songs are those two things related or have you always been a huge pop music fan um my f i've been a beatles pop guy yeah but i want to pay t i've just been producing some records and i want to you know I just I don't want I want to know all music you know mm -hmm. so I, I've been paying attention to what what clicks. There's a m so much talent in the world right now. Yeah. Um, and it seems like they're getting the the most talented are getting younger and younger, mm. and it's uh, just really it's it's mesmerizing because when I was 17, like Billie Eilish is 17, I was a senior year in high school smoking joints in graveyards <laughs> at night and uh, playing sports mm -hmm. and not doing my homework and not reading the books I was told to read and s skipping class, not spending a bunch of time in the studio writing and changing the world, you know? So I always compare their lives to mine and how different they are and how amazingly like put together some of these people are at such a young age. Yeah, of yeah. course. Well, if you're looking for an amazingly put together record, uh, listen to Wide Awake by our good friend Raylan Baxter. He's joined us today. Raylan, thank you so much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Nice tie around, man. <laughs> thank That's you. Good. Uh, thank you for having me.